This is a way to draw shear diagrams for five common cases that you generally see. A, uh, the first case, a real classic one, is a, a, pin, a simply supported beam where it's pinned on the left side and there's a roller on the right side, and we have something like a 200 pound force acting right down the middle of it. And that's supported in part by the pin on the left side and the roller on the right side. And by symmetry, we can say that this is equal to 100 pounds and this is equal to 100 pounds. This also assumes that these forces act over an infinitesimal distance or over a zero distance, which is never the case. Um, even something as simple as you pushing on the table with your finger, that load is distributed over the width of your finger, be it a half an inch or a centimeter or something like that. So let's move away from these at the moment and we'll, be a, we'll, we'll examine a more realistic case in which that load is spread over a finite distance. So here's that more realistic example. I've got a force of negative 200 pounds distributed across the center of the beam acting downward. And by symmetry, that needs to be supported by a 100 pound force on the left and another 100 pound force on the right. The graph we're trying to generate is the shear force, V, as a function of x, where x is the distance from the left side of the beam. To start with, let's pretend that we're off the left side of the beam. We're to the left of the very left side of the beam, or x is a, a negative number. The shear force to the very left, or, or off the beam, is, is 100, 100 pounds minus 200 pounds, gives us a negative 100 pounds, plus 100 pounds is equal to zero. So the shear force on the very left side of the beam, or I'm sorry, to the left of the left side of the beam, has to be zero. And uh, by the same uh, logic, the shear force to the right of the beam, off the beam, also has to be zero. So as we generate this plot, no matter what we do, it has to be zero for negative values of x, and it has to be zero for x larger than the length of the beam. Additionally, the slope of the curve that we'll draw, dv dx, is equal to w, or the distributed load in all cases. To calculate the values of w, we need to know the width over which the forces are being distributed. So in the center of it, we've got w is equal to negative 200 pounds divided by 4 feet, and that's equal to negative 50 pounds per foot. Additionally, on the left side, W is equal to 100 pounds over 2 feet, and that's equal to positive 50 pounds per foot. In this case, if we ignore the weight of the beam, uh, W is equal to 0 in this region, and it's also equal to 0 in this region because no forces are being applied there. So whatever we draw for V as a function of X should have a positive constant slope. It should have followed by a 0 slope, followed by a negative constant slope, followed by a 0 slope, and again a, a positive slope. Something that has a zero slope is linear, or sorry, something that has a constant slope is linear. So let's draw a line over this first segment. So we came, uh, our slope here is equal to 50 pounds per foot. And with this slope, we need to come up a value of 100 pounds for the shear force. And now we're going to proceed directly to the right with zero slope, because W is zero in this region. And now it's going to have a slope of negative 200 pounds per foot followed by something that has zero slope. And now we're going to come back up to v equals zero with a constant slope. So in this region, it's just an, a slope of negative 50 pounds per foot. And we came down a, we're down to negative 100 pounds right here. And we came down a total distance of 200 pounds. Let's examine a case in which instead of distributing the load over two feet, we're going to distribute this load over one foot, and we're going to distribute this load also over one foot, and we're going to take this load and instead of distributing it over four feet, we're going to distribute it also over one foot. And W up here, the, uh, the load up here is 200 pounds distributed over one foot, so this means W up here is equal to negative 200 pounds per foot. The way this will alter the graph, we'll still come up 100 pounds per, for the shear over here, and we'll still come down to negative 100 pounds, so that distance is 100 pounds, and the distance we came down right here because of this 200 pound load is 200 pounds. So here's a value, V is equal to negative 100 pounds over that distance. Those still remain the same. However, what happens is we come up to that 100 pounds uh, more quickly with a steeper slope, and then we proceed over to the right with a constant slope. And our slope now, for this part of it, is equal to 100 pounds per foot. And the slope over here 
in the center region, it becomes steeper as well because we're at a zero slope until we hit this region and we come down more steeply and eventually we'll reach a zero slope again between these two. We'll follow over to the right and again we come up more steeply at the end of it because of this, uh, because the forces are being tightened up. If I do this to scale, it would look like this. We'll come up to a hundred pounds with a slope of a hundred pounds per foot. We'll drop down. We'll come down two hundred pounds right here yeah, with a slope of negative two hundred pounds per foot. And then we come back up to zero with a slope of a hundred pounds per foot. Now let's talk about that hypothetical case we uh, talked about at the beginning in which these distributed loads are concentrated into point forces so that all of these become infinitesimally thin and they end up turning into one arrow. If you can imagine, this slope will now become a vertical. So here's how we would represent it. In this case, we've got W is equal to 100 pounds. Uh, over a distance of zero feet, and that means that W uh, tends towards infinity, then our slopes will approach infinity or it'll go straight up. So to simply for, for these diagrams, all we simply do, it's got to be zero to the left of the beam, and we'll come up 100 pounds, and we'll go straight across because W is equal to zero between the two arrows, and then we'll come down 200 pounds, so we'll come down to here, and then uh, it'll be zero, as we move to the right, and then or it'll be it'll the slope will be zero as we move to the right. It remains at negative two hundred, and then we come back up to zero here with a line with an infinite slope. So there's the shear diagram for a simply supported beam uh, with two hundred pounds in the middle. Here's an example in which we have a beam that's cantilevered to the wall, or it's uh, somehow fixed to the wall. And th in this case, the beam has a weight, and the weight of the beam equals 20 pounds per foot. So each foot of the beam weighs 20 pounds. If I had, that the beam was two feet long, it would weigh 40 pounds. So what this effectively means then is we have a distributed load of W equal to a constant of 20 pounds per foot. And at the end of the beam, I'm going to draw a little person. And the person standing on the very edge of the beam, and that person weighs 150 pounds. And we'll treat that person, uh, we'll treat this one effectively as a point loading of 150 pounds right at the very end of the beam. What supports this is a support reaction right at the wall. And that support reaction is going to equal the weight of the beam. It's 20 pounds per foot multiplied by 10 feet plus the 150 pound person at the end of the beam. And that's, so that's a total uh, force of 350 pounds supporting the beam and the person standing at the edge of it. So again, just like before, the, the shear force has to be zero for any value of x that's less than zero to the left of the beam, and it also has to be zero anywhere to the right of the beam. So when I look at this, I say, well, we've got a down, we need to move downward for v over here, so we could say, one thing we could argue is that, well, right here, that's got to be 150 pounds right before we knock it back down to zero. And on the left side, we have an upward force of 350 pounds. We come up a value of 350 pounds, and we'll connect these two with a line because we have a constant slope, and that slope is equal to negative 20 pounds per foot. So this is how I would draw the shear diagram for this problem. So we come up to 350 pounds, drop with a constant slope 20 pounds per foot over 10 feet. That brings us down to 150 pounds. And finally, let's do a slightly more complicated example in which the weight of the beam decreases as you move towards the end of it. So the end of the beam could be made out of a material that's not as dense as the material over here, or it could be a situation where the beam is simply wider into and onto the screen on the left side than it is on the right side. What this means is that at x equals 0, w equals negative 200 pounds per foot, and when x is equal to 10 feet, w is equal to negative 100 pounds per foot. If I integrate the weight of the beam over its distance of two feet, what I end up with is a support reaction of 1,500 pounds acting upward at the left. So to draw the shear diagram, again, shear, our shear force has to be zero at the left side of the beam, has to be zero off to the right side of the beam, and right at the beginning, I jump up 1,500 pounds. And what I do is I've got a large negative slope of negative 200 here, and I've got a smaller slope right where it intersects zero of negative 100 pounds per foot. And if I connected these with a continuous function, I'll get something that, that looks like this. It's a real crappy drawing, but I'll show you the, the actual one in a second. 
if dv dx is equal to w, that means v is equal to the integral, or it's equal to 1,500 pounds plus the integral of 0 to x of w dx. And if I evaluate this integral, what I'm left with is 1,500 minus 200x plus 5x squared. So I get a parabolic relationship. And if I actually graphed it, this is what my real uh, shear diagram looks like. Zero comes up, uh, approaches back down to zero with a negative slope that gets smaller towards the end of it.